Don't worry, I'll show you. On your marks, get set, go! It's episode 3 of the Max Fan, and what better place to talk some track and feed with our Max fans than here at the National Stadium. It's day one of Olympic trials, and I'm going to ask our Max fans. Last week we heard about their all-time 4x1 men's team. What about the women? Let's go! On the first leg now, we have Fraser Price. On the second leg, I we'll put Alison Felix. On the third leg, I we'll put a um, thing there, Mary Jose Talu. And on the anchor, I we'll put Sherika Jackson. Actually, to Elaine, Elaine to um, Sherika, Sherika to Sakai. It has to be a Jamaican. So we'll go with Judith Cam um, Cockberg starting. To Elaine, Tom's era, Shelly and Merlin at the anchor. So I'm going to go with two Americans and two Jamaicans. I'm going to have a Shelly and Fraser Price on first leg. You know, get the pocket rocket start. And I'm going to hand off to Carmelita Jita. Uh, and then she's going to hand off to Elaine thompson Hira on the third leg. You know, we want to get that nice bend. And then we're going to hand over to Shakeri Richardson. Elaine Shelley. Juliet Cuthbert. And, and Sherika. So it's going to be the big three from Jamaica. Um, Shelly, Sherika, um, Ilian, uh, Shakar. Merlin Otti, Shelly, Ilian, and Sherika. Veronica Campbell, Shelly, <laughs> Ilian, and um, Otti. So my all-time team that I would put together for a women's 4x1 team, for start, Shelly and Fraser Price, as she got pop the block. She would hand over to the great Elaine Thompson era. Imagine her on the back stretch, poetry in motion. Then Elaine would turn over to Marianne Jones. I know the controversy that follows, but let's give credit where it's due. She's that woman. And on the anchor leg, Carmelita Jeto. So it's a mixed team of US and American Jamaica, and it would be a record run, in my opinion. Well, that's it for episode three of the Max Fan. This one in particular meant a little bit more. I don't know if being in the stadium just gave it a little flavor, but you'll be the judge of that. You might be here again, who knows? That's it for episode three. See you soon. Okay, Kimani with our Max Fan Olympic feature. We're changing gears now to football on the Sports Max Zone. The Copa America will continue into the weekend with the final round of group games taking center stage. One of those final games would include Jamaica's Reggae Boys seeking to put an end to their streak of eight Copa America matches without a victory or a draw when they face Venezuela, who currently sit atop Group B. Here to discuss their chances of breaking that streak is Sports Max football analyst Lige Williams. Lige, um, the Jamaicans have known only defeat at the Copa America so far. Based on Venezuela's performances so far in the tournament, the odds favor Venezuela winning again and Jamaica still being denied a point in Copa America. Am I on the right track? Yeah, I think so, because Venezuela have been playing some good stuff, not only in the Copa America, but leading into it as well. I'm still not convinced that they're the strongest team in the tournament, but I still think they have enough to cause Jamaica some serious problems, especially if Jamaica are going to be a bit passive as they have tended to be to start the competition. But if Jamaica go there and play on, play on the front foot, you know, halftime in the second game, coach Hal Grimson said that they didn't have anything to lose, so they went out there and went for it. I think if he employs a similar mindset for this Venezuela game from the start, it could be a very competitive one. So although Venezuela are the favourites, and rightfully so, I think Jamaica can cause them some problems. Yeah. I just want to go back quickly, though, to the, the last game that the Jamaicans played against Ecuador because uh, there, there's been some pressure now on the coach for lack of results. Um, but at the same time, fans saw where the officiating 
may not have been favorable to Jamaica. I looked at a con Conma Ball uh, video presentation about the VAR treatment, and it, it does appear that, that there are officials there who felt Jamaica, the Jamaicans were not fairly treated in that, in that penalty call. Um, so given the fact, and it wasn't the only issue officiating, given that fact, do you think maybe the fans are a little bit hard on the lack of success for the Jamaican team, given the fact that things could have been a lot different if the, if the referee's decisions were more favorable in their last game? I mean, yes and no, because that, assuming that Jamaica would have gotten that penalty and scored it, that would have changed the game state to a level one, so anything could have happened from that point on. But I can only speak for myself in terms of the criticism that I have leveled at the coaching staff or even the players as well. And it's mainly been down to the style of play and the intent of how they, in, how they go into games. That, that's what I've been more critical of. I, I didn't expect Jamaica to come to the Copa America and cause any major upsets or for them to really go in and go deep into the tournament. It was really just to show some performances no, so know that when you go into the Nations League, you go into the World Cup qualifiers, that Jamaica have a good platform. They haven't shown too much of that to me so far. So I, I think this game against Venezuela coming up, just like the second half against Ecuador, is more so down to the performance that I would like to see as opposed to the result. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that has been on my mind, Lej, is do you think coach should play some of the younger players versus the players that the regular starters and give these younger players the opportunity to feel what it is like on the biggest stage seeing that we have nothing to lose what's your take on that yeah i agree with you i think some of the the players that haven't really been getting any minutes kaim dixon has only gotten around 20 minutes cumulatively i think that he should be getting some game time also ronaldo cifas uh, hasn't been getting much minutes either uh, been subbed down in the 80 plus minute twice so I do think that both of those players can make an impact. And if Jamaica is planning to maybe shift away from that three at the back slash five at the back system, I think a good introduction would be a Ronaldo Cephas or Kaim Dixon onto that right-hand side. And as you said, Jamaica should go for it. They should try and play a much more aggressive style. So if they're doing that, the only way to, to really inject that, that thrust would be to inject some youthfulness as well. So... I think getting in some of the younger players, maybe even giving some of the local players a game as well would be pretty good. So, yeah, I agree with you completely. But there's also the side that, you know, you want to end the competition on a high note. Um, playing around and trying out younger players can end in, let's just say, um, a, a bigger defeat than they would expect. And then it can also add further... Um, disappointment to their campaign so which one do we toss up yeah but I, I think if you're only looking at the results then you you're painting the the wrong picture going forward uh, as, as I mentioned I, I don't think well I'm not quite sure of the general consensus of the Jamaican population but I'm assuming that most of the the population didn't expect Jamaica to go pretty deep or they didn't expect them to beat Mexico, beat Ecuador, and beat Venezuela. So I think the most important thing is, and you did mention that the younger players might mess up maybe the chemistry that has been brewing in the team, so maybe they won't be able to execute game plans, especially if you're changing the game plan from the passive one to an aggressive one. So that, that could be a worry, but for me, I, I think that most of these players should be accustomed to playing that style of football, so I don't think it'll be too much of a change. Mm. Yeah. And Lige, a lot of people looking ahead to World Cup qualifiers, and the fact that the USA, Mexico, and Canada as hosts are automatic qualifiers, and the other teams in CONCACAF will scrap for positions, uh, the general feeling is that the chances of a Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago and so on qualifying for the World Cup would increase. But we've got to look at teams like Panama and so on, who've been playing really well, and to, to, to think automatically that because... Uh, the CFU teams aren't battling the USA, Canada, and uh, Mexico for World Cup spots in 2026 uh, should make things easier. Maybe a little bit misleading. Yeah, yeah completely misleading. I, I think that at this current moment, although I think Jamaica is in the same bracket as a Panama, for example, Jamaica beat them in the Nations League earlier this year mm -hmm. in that third-place playoff. I do think that Panama is a 
team better placed to qualify for the World Cup at this current point. You can never forget a team like Costa Rica as well, who are always in and around it. So I think it would be naive for Jamaicans on a whole to think that it would be an easy road. I don't, but with that being said, I don't think any Jamaican thinks that it's going to be an easy road <laughs> to get to the World Cup. But with that being said as well, I do think that Jamaica has the quality to get to the World Cup, but they'll have to be a much more aggressive unit. I've been preaching an aggression for <laughs> yeah. basically the past couple of and weeks brave. now. Yeah, yeah. brave is the word you use as well. Yeah, you, you need to go for it. And if you're going to be passive against some of these nations, they will hurt you. Uh, I, I think if you're going to say, for instance, Jamaica beat Panama one in the last time we played. If Jamaica were to go and play Panama in such a negative way again, and Panama have a better attacking day, I can see Panama, if that game were to be played 10 times, turning us over, turning Jamaica over six, seven times out of that 10. So I, I don't think it's ever going to be the right way to play football, to just be negative. So you have to be a positive nation if you're going to get that qualification. And mm. hopefully going forward, we're going yeah. to see that. Okay, yeah. okay. So Venezuela will be tackling the Jamaicans on Sunday. On Monday's Sports Max Zone show, I'm pretty certain we'll review what happened over the weekend yeah. in, in Copa. But Liz, thanks for stopping by here on set, talking football. And we'll be back to put the lid on this Friday's show on the Sports Max Zone on the other side of the break.